The editor of Nuestra Voz, Jorge Dominguez, is also in Texas. He traveled to the border that separates the United States and Mexico and provided this eyewitness account of his experience. We are right here on the border between the U.S. and Mexico. This is the international bridge between uh, Brownsville and Matamoros in Mexico. Of course, we are in the United States territory. As you can see behind me, you will see uh, people crossing by, uh, walking. Uh, of course, to go from the U.S. to Mexico is very easy. There is not a line. Everybody just walk by. But when you go to the other side, you see the long lines of people trying to get into the United States. The process is much more complicated. This is exactly what is happening now here in the, United States, in the, in the frontier between the United States and Mexico. This is an international community. People used to go uh, back and forth from the United States to Mexico all the time. People tell us that they used to go there to just to buy medicines. Now the process is much more complicated because the immigration laws are being enforced and people are afraid. Uh, 85% of the population here is from Mexican heritage, so everybody looks Mexican. When the authorities are looking for undocumented the immigrants, they are looking at everybody. Uh, the other thing is, they say that the, a lot of people here, they have been living here for a long time without documents. Now they are afraid to go out. Now there is a problem with that. Uh, this is the situation at the border. Jorge joins us now from McAllen, Texas, to follow up, Jorge, on the point you made during your journey to the border. The bishop said at their news conference that the crisis is not just a border problem, so it can't be resolved at the border. What do they mean by that? Well, at least that was a Bishop Flores from Roundsville uh, Diocese. I mean, the local bishop. And, and what he was saying was, you cannot pretend that you are going to fix the problem here at the border when the immigrants get here because the the, pro, the origin of this problem is in El Salvador, nor Guatemala, Mexico. The violence, the economical situation, all the problems that those families confront over there and that made them take the decision to come here, you know, leaving everything behind and, you know, taking a lot of risk to come here. And they say, that's the you know the root of the problem you cannot pretend that you are going to solve the problem here we have to promote solutions in those countries so not so many people are forced to come to the united states during the news conference you posted uh you put a question that is to cardinal donardo about our borders and the flood of migrants trying to cross over let's listen we have heard about the moral imperative of this crisis there is a moral component to it we we, we should be compassionate and there is a legal component to it. We are a country of laws. But I think there is an arithmetic component to it. N not everybody can come here, right? So from a Christian point of view, from a moral point of view, uh, what is the limit? I remember that Jesus Christ answered this question saying 70 times 7. But what I mean is, for how long we are compassionate when we say there, that we don't have a space for more people. Uh, is, isn't that a question too? It certainly is a question. Thank you for it. Um, every nation has, a, uh, has borders. Uh, we in our faith uh, respect the borders, even of our nation. We, what I think we have right now is a broken immigration system. Uh, if you have a, um, a relatively intact and robust immigration system, yes, there will still be people that may not be able to come in. But the whole manner in which you go about this will be far more of integrity. And uh, you do want to get people who are coming in to do us harm, right? Hasn't that been? Those more of a, a traditional conservative position are so worried that uh, the borders are too porous. I think. What we need is that we need borders, but our laws and compassion can work together. They do not have to be absolutely opposed. But we're not opposed that there would be Congress to do a much better integrated uh, immigration system. Jorge, the bishops are acknowledging the American immigration system is broken, but what action plan are they recommending to Catholics to resolve this crisis? Well, uh, for me, that was the best part of the, the press conference. Uh, they acted like a football team uh, getting to the zone. 
I mean, uh, they have a very clear strategy. The first thing was, this is a pastoral visit, this is not a political act. We are coming here because we care about the people. The second thing is, there is not something that is urgent and it's not negotiable. Families have to be reunited as soon as possible. The process already started, but we want that process to finish now. The third, the third, the third uh, issue that they wanted to address was our immigration laws are broken, what you were mentioning, and we have to do something to fix it. But they, they point out that it, it is not by, you know, that you have to cool down the rhetoric and really work with Congress to, to find a solution. They were asking for people to, you know, to be more friendly, but to pressure Congress, because they say that the, the key to the solution is not in the White House, it is in Congress. So that's what they are proposing, a permanent, effective uh, immigration reform that can solve the problem permanently and not just, you know, as an emergency crisis in the border. Very powerful words there, Jorge, but is he being heard? Uh, what Cardinal Dinaro was saying was, he, he was asking Catholics to do their part. Yeah, he, he would, I, I mean, several of them mentioned the same thing. This is not a political issue. This is a humanitarian issue. We all have a duty to, you know, with this problem. And he was asking Catholics to write to their congressmen, to, to the congressperson, and, and to pressure Congress into doing something. Now you are, you are asking me, if he's going to be hurt? Well, if we hear him, if we act, maybe Congress will need to hear what, they, hear what the Catholic Church is saying. If we as citizens do nothing, Congress doesn't have to do anything about it. All right, Jorge, thank you so much. You have brought us incredible insight. We look forward to seeing more of your reports on our Facebook page and online. Thank you so much.